Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident that you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash Android. And by FreshBooks, the ridiculously easy to use cloud accounting software used by over 10 million people. Try it for free for 30 days at freshbooks.com slash AAA. And by Dollar Shave Club. For a great shave at a great price, join Dollar Shave Club. New members get their first month of the executive razor and a tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter for only $5 with free shipping. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash Android. Welcome to another episode of All About Android. This is episode number uh, 329. There we go. For Tuesday, August 8th, 2017, we're your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Florence Ion. And you, uh, oh, wait a minute. No, it's just you and I. It's just you and I. It's just you and I. Well, and Brian. I, you see, see, you're singing, uh-huh. but I really needed Ron here like 10 minutes ago when I made right. a 90s pop culture reference it's and you true. had no idea what I was talking about. It's true. Well, Not actually, that I don't love being here with you, <laughs> but, it do, but it absolutely helps to have Ron when I make those weird... <laughs> yeah, they're guaranteed to happen at least once. There's going to be that strange... And see, if you were to ask me like how I, how I am with like 90s pop culture... Yeah. I would think that I'd be okay. But you guys, you're, you're a very particular vein of pop oh, culture from the 90s yeah. that I just apparently flew right over my head. Well, Ron, I hope you're having fun tonight. Yeah, I hope you're having a good time, buddy. We'll see you next week. Uh, but we do have Brian. He's Brian's going to be flying in throughout the show. We oh, look you guys. how cool Don't worry. you are with your sunglasses. I love it. It's because of the lights, guys. You know how I'm usually in the dark? It's because yeah. the lights really affect me. So ah. sunglasses. So going That's forward, better, yeah. Brian's fu- future is so bright that he's just going to continue wearing shades. Like it's because the show is going to be so bright tonight. It's true. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about this week. Of course, we're going to be talking about the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active that was just announced. We've got hands-on with the Honor 9 or the Honor 9, which is how you actually say it. Uh, YouTube's new Android TV app. Also, YouTube has a new feature to its regular Android and iOS apps. Uh, but you know, we'll talk about the Android part of that equation. Uh, crashy app. Crackdown in the Play Store. Tons of your email. We've got a big email section and a whole lot more. We're going to start off with something a little different. We're not doing the news today. I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, Of course. I think you'll understand, but really quick here, we feel like we need to address this. There was a manifesto. It was written by a Google engineer. Spread like wildfire over the weekend, first internally and then virally outside of Google over the weekend. Uh, Highly controversial. I'm sure you guys have probably seen or heard of it right now. It involves a whole lot of things. Sexism in the workplace, claims that women are biologically less capable or disadvantaged in technology and programming. Uh, Looked at the perceived monoculture within Google that leans heavily toward the left, or so it says. Uh, Sundar Pichai has since fired the guy who wrote it. uh, He said, uh, along with that, that the author violated Google's code of conduct in the process. Why are we talking about it here? We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but A, because, well, I think it's pretty obvious we don't agree with many of the assertions in the manifesto, but B, because the products that we discuss on this show on a weekly basis, they're intrinsically affected uh, by the inner workings behind the scenes and, and the decisions like these affect how products are created. It's it's part of the reason why kind of diversity is such an important thing is that uh, different uh, perspectives on the products that we use. Flo, I know that you have thoughts on this. What Where, where do you stand on this? What are your thoughts? Uh, well, obviously I've been... Um obsessively pouring over everything that's been going on since Saturday. Those of you who follow me on Twitter know that I've been obsessively pouring over it and retweeting uh, viewpoints and things of the sort. I don't want to bring all those here, but I do want to say that uh, it's been kind of a tough couple of days yeah, on the internet been a little rough. Yeah. Uh, for many of us. So do me a favor. And if you have any any women that you just like 
talk with in the tech industry or maybe they're like me and they write about it, can you just shout them out and let them know that you're behind them and that you support them? Because that would mean a whole lot right now. It would certainly also, counterbalance right? a lot of the- It would certainly uh, counterbalance yeah. um, the really upsetting things that were said. Uh, and I do, I was wondering if maybe I could pull in a little a little uh, paragraph from uh, Stacey uh, Higginbottom's- uh, yeah, she wrote a piece on she Medium. Did, she did she's write gonna, a piece on Medium. She's going to be coming on, uh, obviously, she's on This Week in Google mm -hmm. every Wednesday, and you better believe they're going to be talking about this. So she wrote up a piece about right. it. Absolutely. What, what yeah. Um, so I just thought this was, this was really worth sharing. So empathy is something everyone should develop. Women don't have a lock on it. Empathy is a valuable trait because it turns those reflexive cries of frustration into something that can help people mature and improve the world around them. So we were talking about this a lot today, Jason and I, we were chatting back and forth about how to approach this. And so I thought maybe it would just be good to pass along the words of Stacy, who is another fellow Twitter, um, Twitter. Twi Twitter. Twitter. -er. <laughs> Twitter yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Not confusing at all. Yeah. So Stacy's obviously, they're going to have a, a great discussion on this. We can Google yeah. tomorrow. Um, I kind of shared my views on this yeah. on, on tech news today. So if you want to dive into that, you can see today's episode of TNT. Uh, but behind you, uh, you know, this is, it's been a, a crazy couple of days, crazy story before we kind of move on and get to the hardware. Uh, I thought this was pretty important. You brought this up earlier and it's uh, totally true. Just a little reminder about history. Ada Lovelace considered to be the very first computer programmer. So, you know, women were there first. All right. With that, Brian. It's time for hardware. Shifting gears. Shifting gears. You're the Samsung, you're Although, the Samsung fangirl, right? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't Maybe said I'm that glad Ron is here. <laughs> I know. We haven't said that in a while. But. JK, Ron. <laughs> I'm never glad when you're not here. Uh, yeah, we have a Galaxy S8 Active that we've announced. And actually, that we've announced, that, that has been announced. I, I didn't announce anything. Um, You're announcing that. I'm telling you about it right now. Okay, let's let's talk about what it is first. So Galaxy S8 Active is the active version of the regular Galaxy S8. Now, I, you know, typically we would have seen this active uh, variant come out just a couple of months after the S8. But so it, this is a little bit delayed. Yeah, it's a little bit delayed. The last two years, we actually had this phone by 4th of July time. And the reason I, I'm using my own anecdotal evidence because I, I've had a phone to review every 4th of July. Yeah, well, I, I remember you had the active mm -hmm. last year. I remember you bringing it into the studio. Uh, well... A little late. It's, it's, it's okay. Whatever, it's here it's now, it's ever. August. Uh, it's got a flatter screen with no rounded corners or edges like the regular S8 series, which is kind of understandable considering it is supposed to be the active version. So a little more rugged than what you're used to. It's got a bezel that protrudes to protect the screen. Naturally, you're gonna want that. Uh, it's frame has metal shock absorbing bumpers. Did it's the last active have that? Or is that a new thing? Because you can kind of see it on the corners there, kind of the the little extra metal piece on it's the corners. Not, I can't even remember if it was on the other one. It didn't have metal piece. So I think last year's, I have last year's actually uh, shoved in my nightstand um, <laughs> because remember the joke I made about how it was my shower phone last year. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's got like rubber corners, that okay. sort of thing. So right. like it's supposed to be shock absorbing right? in that sense. So. Well, so then they've made some pretty significant kind That's of design chases, uh, changes this year versus the last year. That's version. true. Uh, it's got a polycarbonate backside, which maybe is not that much different from the last two. I have to actually look on the specs on that. Um, I remember it being something kind of yeah. like that. Screen is shatter resistant, which That's is, no. you know, yeah. That's new, right? They didn't have shatter resistant last year. It was just dust well, and waterproof. The screen, the screen was, it felt like it had a film over it, like it had some uh, sort of protective covering on it. I don't. It felt uh, different okay. than a regular Galaxy phone. Probably not shatter resistant in the same way that the Moto Z2 Force. That's is, exactly right? what I was thinking of when I said that. Actually, yeah, I was thinking of the Moto just because that's the the example that we have. But that has like yeah. a removable display with layers and. Yeah, that has layers. That's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering how this because they made they made a, a point to point yeah. out. Uh, that this is a shatterproof screen, that it may, I think it's the first time that they've done that with the S8 uh, Active. And I want to know, like, I, I kind of want to get it in my hands and compare it to the Moto Z2 Force, because though that screen was, is shatterproof, 
it kind of has a weird kind of like tacky feel to it. Mm. And, you know, it's kind of got yeah. that little bendy quality to it, which I mean is what makes it shatterproof. So you get what you get. But I wonder if that's similar here or if they're doing something entirely different. Uh, that'll be interesting. But I think what people are really going to find, it, you know, great about this phone is the battery pack. Yeah, it's no a 4,000 milliamp battery uh, versus the 3,000 default you'd get in a regular GS8. Unfortunately, it's only exclusive to AT&T, although it says for a limited time, which means that this would be different from the last two years when it was only, the active was only an AT&T exclusive, which I was kind of a bummer for, you know, those of us and other carriers who wanted a phone that you could chuck at a tree trunk because you can <laughs> chuck, I, you can chuck these things at a tree trunk and it'll be fine. I mean, I have chucked them at fences for, while reviewing them. Whoa, but you've never chucked it at a tree trunk. It, it's true. I've never chucked it at a tree trunk. <laughs> you haven't done the difference. standard tree tr tree trunk no, chuck trap. But the tra fence was wooden. The tree, the tree chunk. <laughs> what is it? Tree trunk, tree trunk chuck test. Chuck test. <laughs> there we go. It's a standard thing in the world of smartphones. We all know this. Chuck test Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I made that joke. <laughs> okay, you can pre-order it today. It's released on. It's coming out this Friday, which is just a couple of days. If you're watching this on Tuesday. Uh, eight hundred fifty dollars and twenty cents compared to the seven fifty for the Galaxy S eight. Although, uh, you guys have seen all the sales that are going on for the Galaxy S eight. What is it at right now? I missed that. Well, there was a sale, I believe, at Best Buy a couple of days ago for the Galaxy S eight. Oh, unlocked. okay. Or maybe it was. Well, yeah. I mean, they're getting closer to the note. Maybe exactly. they're kind of lowering so things I a little bit. It, I see it. I see it being discounted. Yep. So if you see a GS8 for 750, maybe see if you can find it somewhere else. Um, also has a dedicated Bixby button. Of course. And the same awkward fingerprint sensor location. Yeah. But I mean, if you're underwater, are you really going to be unlocking your phone with your fingerprints? You never know. You, you, if you can, you might as well be able to. Can you? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not, I'm not really There's too much going on there. You've got <laughs> rippling water. You've got, you know, the ripples of your fingerprints. Probably if you're lucky not. And have fingerprints. I don't think that you probably can, but um, okay, cool. Well, I'm sure we'll, we'll get this in, in hand at some point and be able it. to be able to take a look at that closer. Uh, Wake County and chat did point out that the Galaxy S7 also touted a shatterproof screen. Shatter, res shatter resistant shatter up to resistant. five feet on a flat surface. And there was nothing strange about that display, right? Like, I wonder how they're how how they're achieving shatter resi there was nothing, resistant versus there was nothing shatterproof strange so about they're it. different it was in fact the feel of it made me feel more secure actually taking it into water because okay. i had this this tactile feedback that this was water resistant yeah so versus yeah. when you take like a gs8 into a pool of water and then you mm. You say to yourself, this is still really strange. Oh, yeah. I do. Like, even though you could probably do that, no, I just couldn't pull myself to do that. It feels really strange. Yeah. And nah. they do sink, by the way. So they'll still go down to the bottom of the pool. So, <laughs> so you know, it can be an exercise if you want to test yourself and see if it, you can if, get it. Yeah, if you want to use a diving toy. Set it to record video, drop it at the bottom of the pool, and then record yourself diving to I get really it. I really regret not doing that this last weekend when I went swimming because I forgot to bring a waterproof phone. Next time you go to a unicorn's house, you got to do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, what they're called in California. <laughs> <laughs> Sharp has a new mid-ranger called the Aquos. Aquos? S2. I never know uh, how to pronounce that. Yeah, I never know either, but I think that's probably close. It bears a design uh, that I think is growingly familiar. It's got the notch out of the front display. So the top and side bezels go are pretty much more or less non-existent. The display goes to all three sides, as we've seen in the Essential, and as we've also seen in leaked, so purportedly leaked uh images of the upcoming iPhone 8, it's got the little notch in the top. So this is, I said it on TNT, and I feel like it's true now, this is quickly becoming a design trend. Ugh. This is a trend that we're seeing more of. This is three phones now this year that has the little uh, notch out of the top thing. Uh, anyways. Cool. Yeah, do you like that design choice or are you just not him or whatever? I, I'm okay. sure I will go gaga over it when I see it in person because yeah. when things are in person, they look so much better. Totally true. Um, totally take, true. you know, Jason and I, for example. So yeah, you see us person. on TV. You see, you see <laughs> my mug on TV and you're just like, never. I hope I never meet that guy in person. Then you meet me in person. Oh my gosh, Jason, handsome. I didn't mean for you. Oh yes, exactly. There you go. <laughs> I was like, don't disparage yourself.
<laughs> I am so handsome in person, you would not believe. Uh, 5.5 inch. You don't have the answer. I don't need to know. Uh, 5.5 <laughs> inch. Stop it, Brian. 5.5 <laughs> inch uh, display, 1440 display with, uh, like I said, minimal bezels. The bottom still has, you know, a sizable bezel, but whatever. Uh, notch. As I said, that's only a notch for the front-facing camera. It's not like the earpiece and everything like that. So uh, that's interesting. It's not huge anyways. It really seems a lot like the Essential and not like the iPhone picture that I've seen. But fingerprint, there you go. It's <laughs> a shitty cam. And you know what? And the sides, <laughs> instead of being rounded on the Our corners, hexagon. it's like... I want to say hex. It reminds me yeah. of a hexagon shape. Uh, can I just say that this is the second time I know of, I'm sure there are other times, that Sharp has like come out with you know, oh, it's so cool, bezel this phone. And then like the phone comes in person and it's just this total well, not interesting device. I mean, they had that one seemingly bezel -less phone. It was bezel -less a Yeah, it was, the, it was the Aquos. It was the and first was Aquos. So I, Aquos Crystal. feeling. Ugh. So it was the Aquos Crystal. Yeah. $240 exactly. back in December of 2014. And it was, I mean, it, this was right about the time we were starting to hear about this potential of a trend toward minimal bezels. And this was really the first phone that it's anyone true. could possibly get their hands on that did this uh, in a mass market sort of way. I don't think it was very successful, but but it was interesting to see it. I mean, the, the phone build quality, I mean, it was a, it was a low to mid, mid range device. So some of the parts of it kind of felt a little cheap, but um, it still, it was very interesting to see the display reach all of those three, you know, uh, bezels pretty closely. You know, it almost felt like an infinity display. It was 720p, wasn't it? Or 780. Probably about whatever, that. About that point, it whatever. was 720. Yeah, it was 720. That was so far back that I don't even care if it's 720 or 780 because it Kit it's Kat. just launched with Kit Kat. <laughs> Kit Kat. We were eating Kit Kats about when that. We were eating launched. Kit Kats. Unfortunately, not Android shaped ones because you had to import those, and that's weird to import chocolate unless you <laughs> buy it at the airport. I will take your word on that. <laughs> That's my stance. All right. Supporting chocolate. Cool. We're making so many Tonight stances. Tonight on All tonight. About Android. <laughs> all right. So you brought a phone in. I did bring a phone in. It's so. You're phoning it in today. It's so what, disgusting what though because my fingerprints all all over it. So yeah. um. Sign of the times. It is the sign of the times. That's a really good point, Jason. That's a really good point. So this here is the Honor Nine. Wow, it is. A and uh, Brian is actually about to throw me a towelie <laughs> so that I can wipe it clean because. Don't it's forget disgusting. to bring a towel, says Brian. Thank you. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Um, it's so gross because every time you touch this phone, it picks up. And, you know, I'm also an oily person, I guess. But <laughs> no, we have finger. We have fingers and they have, you know, we're human beings. Like we leave marks when we touch things. It's true. Um, I remember the Honor 8 being a fingerprint. Um, it was. Well. OK, but you know what? Let's forget the fingerprinting this for a second. And let's just look at how beautiful this phone is. And how shiny. Uh, ooh, Look at this blue, how that guys. In the Look light. At this if you could see blue. it right now, audio listeners, you'd be um, like, I wish I was watching the it video. It really is. It really is pretty. And it's got these like these dual uh lenses at the top. So let let's list off the specs real quick, okay? <laughs> so we've got an octa-core Kirin 960 processor, four gigs I'll of RAM. That. 64 gigs of internal storage, micro SD expansion slot if you need that, 5.2 inch 1080p IPS display, which let me tell you folks, in person, it is quite, it is quite pretty. It is, is a pretty display. I am satisfied with it thus far. Uh, it's got an eight megapixel front facing camera, dual 12 megapixel rear facing cameras, 3200 milliamp battery, and it's running Android 7.1 on top of EMUI 5.1, I believe. It is roughly 400-ish dollars when converted to US dollars. So I'm kind of looking at whether it's a valid, it's a valid import at this point, because I don't think, I don't think they're gonna be selling it uh, online. Uh, Burke just brought in the HTC with the liquid back. Which one was this? This wasn't the U11 because that's a squeezy side. It's the. This is the the what? Is this the no, HTC? no, no! It's the one before. It's the U11. Ah, I forgot I the name. It's you it's, rejected it. He was given the opportunity oh. to have the, L it's U11, the U11 Ultra. Ultra thank is you, Wade it? County, for. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, he he's uh, he's on the money. Um. Got the liquid back. So it's kind of similar to that, I suppose, but it's, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, the HTC has a little bit more rounding going on in the corners. You know, I, I guffed but. because I didn't grab the Honor 8 because, to be quite honest with you all, it is buried under a pile of other phones that came out after it. Well, my Honor 8 has a huge <laughs> crack in the back because it's glass on the front and back, as the Honor 9 is. And if you are, if you are a uh, me, then you don't want a phone <laughs> you are with me. glass on the back because you are guaranteed to break it at some point. Apparently, that's my thing. So, so what I said, it's you a nice looking phone. Couldn't buy it online. I just meant. I mean, it looks like you can buy it on Amazon now. So it looks like it is on sale on Amazon around. I'm finding between like four seventy and five thirty. Okay, uh, a couple different colors. Overall, I'm still kind of playing with it. I I took it I took this to the pool on Sunday and I bravely was holding it above water to take Ooh, video. It was very brave. brave of me. Uh but you know what's funny is my husband is looking at the snaps that I took from that day and I kind of like Snapchat because it will sort of show you the real resolution of the phone that you were using in mm -hmm. some capacity even though it's already oh, okay even though it's already compressed. And uh, my husband just said that your Snapchats did not look good. What did, what did you make it with? Isn't that interesting? And the audio yeah. sounded really uh, crisp in that sort of unnatural way. I don't know if- Okay. Do you understand what I mean? I, I know what, I what mean? you mean. Yeah, I, I feel like I it's do. Very, yeah. uh, it was sounded very tinny. Yeah. Um, coming out from the Snapchat. So mm -hmm. I guess that's how the video is Overly record. brittle, kind of- Yeah, crackly. that's a good way to put it. Yeah. But it's a really pretty phone and the battery life, still kind of testing that. Like I I I'm not I'm not sure about the battery yeah. because of how just bright the phone is. But okay. um what carrier are you testing it on? I'm right using actually a mint sim, which is an M an M V N O of T Mobile. Okay. So technically I'm on the T Mobile network right now. It says T Mobile on here too. Okay. Uh it works just fine. All right. Yeah. It's the Honor Nine. The Honor Nine, and for the record, I kind of like the pictures it takes. I'll post. I'll post a couple of things to Instagram this week for those of you who follow me there. For Insta. Yeah. As the kids are calling it these days. No, they don't. Um, so hey, real quick before we move on, I've had some some battery stuff that I've been playing around with uh, from Mophie. I actually have. So I remember when I had the S Seven, I believe. I got from Mophie a juice pack, which is actually what I have on my Pixel XL right now. <laughs> it's a little different though. You'll you'll see why. Look so the juice pack basically, yeah. So the juice pack uh, is a very big case for your phone. It actually, so you go. Yeah, hold on. I have to pop this out. It's obviously not easy to pop out. There Whoa. you go. All right, so that pops out. It actually plugs in to the USB C, right? And the battery pack is is built into the case. So you snap that in and it's good to go. So the juice pack is a 2950 milliamp hour battery. This whole case is 99.95. So basically this is a phone case with a battery pack built into it. And the, the good news about that is that if you plug it in at night, like if this was just your phone case forever, uh, you plug this in at night, it has priority charging. So it charges the pixel first and then it charges the battery pack. And you would know where your battery pack is at by pushing this. Now you can see it's empty because it's been passing charge through to my phone all day. So as a result, my battery, I haven't ever had it on the charge ever since like 6.30 this morning. It's it's, it's 96%. So here it is, seven, nice. six and six thirty in the evening. I'm still at 96%. This is just passing through because it's it's the phone case. Now the downside of course is that you've got a really big case on your phone. This thing's huge. As evidenced by the the cavern through which you have to travel in order to use the fingerprint sensor. I mean, you, it's a little weird the first million times you do that and then you kind of get over it, but it works just fine as long as you've learned your fingerprint. As long as you don't have long sensor. nails, because let me tell you, when I've got my nails long and painted, I can't touch that thing with, because I have an otter box I travel with. Uh, but And this looks like a good travel case. This is a need, really good travel case. Yeah. I would definitely say that if you're going to conference or whatever. And it looks protective in a capacity. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's going to protect your phone. It's, it's raised And you could throw off. it at someone. It would probably cause some damage, <laughs> How, to how would it do on the tree trunk? Chuck Not that test. I am telling you to commit violence against another person. No, but but trees, tree trunks, I tree have no problem. When they become sentient, 
Precisely. I will totally throw chuck, it at them. chuck this at a tree trunk for a test. Uh, so anyways, so that's cool. Another cool benefit or, or aspect to this is that you have this. This is a Charge Force Power Station Mini. This is 3,000 milliamp hour battery. It's $49.95. Wow. This has wireless charging capabilities in it, right? So I can go like this. And it snaps Wait, so right on the battery back. on top of a battery. Is that what you're doing right now? It's, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm that doing right now. That is so much battery. And that is for every teenager going it, to a music festival to get this. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> so you've got the battery that snaps onto the back and yay, uh, you can do that too. Or <laughs> what might make a, maybe just a little more sense if that's the case is this one. This is the Mophie Charge Force case is forty nine ninety five. It's a slimmer line. It's on the Galaxy S eight Plus right now. Is what you're looking at right here. It's a slimmer, kind of more of like a standard, uh, you know, like leather style uh, case for the S eight. But it has the wireless charging capabilities hooked in there, so I could snap that on when I run out or you know while I'm while I'm on downtime eating lunch or whatever, and you know press that and it would pass the charge on through. And everything. I don't have it powered up, so I can't show you. But um, basically, what this is, this case kind of taps you into kind of their charge force world. They have like a dash mount that mm. you can charge it, that you can snap it onto your dash, and then you know it holds it on your I'm dash, it. and then it charges through that. There's a desk mount. I mean, this could you could be on your desk, plugged into USB, and it's just the thing you throw it on top of when you get to your desk. So it's kind of a, a little bit of an ecosystem here. But I thought it was kind of interesting. I've been I've had fun kind of playing around with it, and there's no denying the fact that like I've had my phone off the charge since uh, 6:30 this morning, and it's still at like. 96%. That's pretty awesome. That I am just so jealous. Can I borrow this? Because Android O has just been killing my Pixel XL battery. <laughs> like I can't even go four hours without, I'm just not, Man, I'm not living the life right now with Android O. I'm just going to tell you. It's, that's, that's crazy. It hasn't been that bad for me, me at all. But <laughs> Oh, and the emojis too. That's like another, you know, oh. it's another grossness on top of my ice cream. Don't even, like, don't even go to emojis. The man. emoji the are so unfortunate looking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. I'm having a really Own hard it. time with it. I'm in a state of denial right now that this is happening to me, <laughs> that I don't have blobs anymore. At least the yeah. blobs were Wow, this is just not something nice to look I've at. paid any attention to other than on the show. Huh? <laughs> I said the, the blobs thing is just not something I've paid any attention to uh, other than on this it's show. It's very it's important I... when you're communicating with people in your life that the emoji, that you can relate to them. Yeah, okay. You know, and you know what I would say is I plead with developers, please come out with some emoji packs that I can just swap in. I'd love something. You can do that and then let us know, AAA at twit.tv. <laughs> All right, we're going to thank the sponsor of today's episode. And that is Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. If you've gone through the process, maybe you have a home or maybe you need to refinance, maybe you've gone through this process before, you know it's not the easiest process in the world. There are a whole lot of speed bumps along the ways and it's just kind of a, a dated process. Uh, Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans, uh, you know, Quicken Loans realized this. They realized that what you need is a client-focused technological solution, a new solution, a new approach. And that's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. Rocket Mortgage gives you the confidence that you need when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. It's simple. It allows you to fully understand all of the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. It's convenient. Their trusted partners allow you to share your financial information with Rocket Mortgage at the touch of a button. It's also powerful. Whether you're looking to buy your first home or your 10th Rocket Mortgage is able to perform thousands of calculations in seconds. It works on the numbers for you. It's based on your income, assets, and credit. And then Rocket Mortgage takes all that information, can analyze all of the home loan options for which you qualify, and then find the one that's just right for you. It makes it super easy for you to select from. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Android. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Android. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLS consumer access .org, number 3030. And we thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support. And now it's time for some apps news. So 
I was thinking before we jump into apps. Yeah. We should check in with Ron. Uh, Brian's been. Uh, oh. Have you been, been communicado? Uh, he's been stalking him on social media while uh, we've been sitting here talking he's, about he's stuff. He's like, yes, I'm, I'm struggling to keep up. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see here. So, what are we looking at? Oh, this is Ron at the Big Gay Ice Cream Shop in New York City. Oh, okay. Oh, look, he's wearing a nice, nice colored shirt. Yeah, he seems to be having a great time having without great time. us. Well, Fine, whatever. Us. Eat your ice cream, Ron. <laughs> Jerk. Fine. I Enjoy some, your ice cream. Look at that big smile. smile. Oh my gosh, look at that Sunday he's eating. Yeah. Oh, so jealous. <laughs> so that was more important than the show, huh, Ron? All right. I see. Fine. It. Hey, that we ice see. cream shop is like I I've I Have hear a lot there? of I've never eaten there. I've never I've But never maybe I should when I go to New York in two weeks, cause it's, I've heard a lot of great things about it. Maybe Ron will take you. That's a good idea. Ron, you need to take me yeah, to get I think, ice cream. I think that'll happen. So. All right, some app news. Thank you for sending that in, Ron. We miss you, but I hope you enjoyed your ice cream. Uh, <laughs> Google is now including app quality signals into its ranking system within the Play Store, always kind of tweaking things to make it better and better, thankfully. Tracks things like app crashes, user engagement, ratings, performance data, all that stuff to create a quality signal for the apps that are there. This will in turn surface the high scores before low scores when you're doing things like searching or taking a look at listings, all that type of stuff. Um, and then, you know, news that I think, I feel like I missed this. I don't think it ended up in the show weeks ago, but Google's also using artificial intelligence uh, to identify bad apps in bulk. So for example, it would analyze, let's say 20 calculator apps uh. Uh, compared in a peer grouping. And then if one of those 20 calculator apps asks for contacts permission, that might be a signal to the AI that it should score less because why does that need contacts permission when all the other calculator apps do not? What happened to just eat, uh, eating? <laughs> what happened to just using a eating TI-83 TI plus, kids? I yeah. mean, come on. You can still program the answers to the test in it. We all did it. We all <laughs> I didn't. did it. I didn't. Didn't you do it, Brian? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You didn't. I, I don't know if I believe. I can't. I can't trust you because you're wearing my, sunglasses. My can't see your eyes. Chemistry teachers in high school is watching this right now. <laughs> um, it's okay. You you already passed. It's it's good that's enough. That's true. It's true. Long in the past. Don't worry about um, it. I'm very curious if this crashy Android apps thing is going to help with bad ads because I kind of feel like sometimes I will download an app that is actually quite. Maybe useful, but the ad network, whatever they're using, is just awful and mm. crashy, and like the uh, the ads will um, the ads will stall if they're video ads or like those mm. annoying ads that they like. Oh, here's a demo; you can play it for five minutes. Oh man, yeah, I know, right? Yes, I, I feel like I see a lot of really bad ads because um, not on apps that I'm installing, but because my kids they get tablet yes. time on the weekends; they get two hours uh, on Saturday and Sunday. And um, I have Family Link running, so I approve their apps and everything like that. Really, it's just my older daughter who ever installs anything. But sometimes, like I'll go over there while she's on the tablet to see what she's, you know, what she's playing or whatever, and I'll see some of the ads that appear on these games. I'm just like, wow, whoa, whoa. like it's so obvious that they're targeting these, you know, groups of kids because yeah. they, they make these ads actually seem like they're games, and that you tap in them, and then that ends up being. A signal and it's just oh it's just horrible <sighs> maybe i need to be a, pe a better parent help me be a better parent i don't know how to do oh, it oh you're a fine parent <laughs> uh, i could be better uh here's something <laughs> here's something that i got to use uh i think actually just yesterday so youtube's mobile app is getting an update that includes mobile chat inside the app which is quite which is quite fun for those of you who maybe have a YouTube community that uh, you'd like to be a part of. You can invite up to 30 people into the chat. You can share videos in there, though, there, though there's no like simultaneous viewing, which oh, I imagine- totally set it off. That set it off? What do you mean? 
That that would that'd be awesome if it like a, if it crashes the GPU because you have two videos running at the same time. No, 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 no. That's no. what I'm imagining. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, like timed simultaneous viewing of, of everybody at the same time. So everybody's in the chat room. Let's hit play on this video and all watch it together and everybody. Chatting. Oh, right, like, right, right. Really cool. Yes, yes, yes. So we could finally watch TV together from across the United States. Yeah, you can do that in other ways. I think there's actually an iOS app that Google created in a 20% project that does that. It hasn't made its way to Android yet, but this well, would seem like Android the people don't like to, to do share, that. apparently. So, yeah. um, share. anyway, it's called Share on YouTube, which is very nice. And uh, the video player will stick to the top while you scroll through the chat, so you don't have to worry about losing your place. Okay. So what I actually used the other day was the web client for this. I used a web chat for a live YouTube, uh, a live YouTube stream. Oh, okay. Is that the same thing? It's not the same thing. Well, it was through. It was on the desktop. It was on the desktop. I think that might be different, actually, because I think if I remember correctly, I'm not this as is... into the YouTube ecosystem as I am into the Android. YouTube is its own interesting platform with its own little nooks and crannies that I have yet to delve into. It's the nooks and crannies video platform. Uh, also, the Thomas <laughs> English muffins. Yes. Buy it. Participate in grocery stores. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking that this news is specifically on mobile. Okay. And if you were doing, okay, now that I think about it, yes, that is different. Okay. Because they've had chat rooms for live broadcasts for a while, and in fact, um, remember at I/O they talked about yes. the tipping mechanism which I can't remember. Oh, Super Chat. Yeah, that's right. Super, Super Chat. Chat. Super Chat. And uh, yeah, so they've had that for a while. I do think that that's different from this. This is like your curated, I'm going to send out an invite to my five best friends and oh. create a chat room within YouTube. Oh, well, that sounds a like a different. lot of fun. Well, that's that's what... Um, so For millennials and children with time for this sort of thing. <laughs> that sounds fun for people with lots with of time. time. I mean, quite honestly, if, yeah. If, yeah. If I was still... I'm not sure that I'd use it very much. We talked about it last uh, yesterday on Tech News Today. Ron uh, Ron was mm -hmm. on uh, as my co-host yesterday then, and we talked about this story and both kind of walked away from that conversation going, you know, Google has a lot of messaging apps out there, but this is a little different, right? Like this is tied to a particular service. I'm not sure it's going to do very well, but I don't That's I don't care that it exists. Like like it's, it's not like another messaging app. It's a messaging app tied around YouTube and we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm cool. With That's it. fair. We will I see guess. how it goes, but. Do you think YouTube, it's gonna do well? Yeah, YouTube is like a giant community of people that I, like I said, nooks and crannies, man. A lot of nooks and crannies in there. Um, and sometimes I'll read the comments for like those really, the, those really popular YouTubers. Uh, and you'll see that there's a little community that kind of develops in the comment section of these very popular YouTubers. I mean, if you have 6 million people watching one video, mm -hmm. uh, let's say a, a gal who's doing a makeup tutorial and you've got a bunch of other gals sharing tips in the chat room, like I could see this, I could see this being used for that sort of thing. Like, you know, or maybe you wanna use it to help teach a technique or something mm -hmm. you can get a bunch of people to come into the chat, like a class. Only 30 people though. It's only up to 30 well, people. Well, like a, like well, a small class a of class. people. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, that's about the size of a classroom. Yeah. Okay. It's got its utility. I'm sure. You I'm know. sure it's got its users. Does it uh, need, does it require a separate app? That I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but it, it actually makes sense because it's kind of tied into the YouTube uh, product. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of people YouTube already there viewing. YouTube is quite a product. Yes. Anyways. Um, so related, because apparently this is a YouTube twofer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Another YouTube app is getting lots of moans and groans. Uh, YouTube for Android TV. We actually heard from a few people who wrote in to mm -hmm. All About Android about this. One in particular, Anthony Kelly wrote in and had a few things to say about this. So I'll just put it in Anthony's words. He says, gone is the old app with its large thumbnails and minimal UI. It's been replaced with what looks like a web wrapper. Everyone's complaining about this whole mm -hmm. web wrapper aspect. The text... Thumbnails and icons are all a little bit too small. He doesn't know if that's a 4K problem, but still it's on Android TV. You'd think they'd have that figured out. He says, no hint of material design. That probably depends on who you ask, whether that makes them mad or not. Uh, he says, also doesn't run smoothly. It takes more clicks to get things done, like liking and subscribing. Ooh. The search box doesn't load the standard QWERTY keyboard. He says he was he's not the type to be resistant to change. He says, I gave the app a chance. 
but it's an almost upsettingly poor experience that led me to uninstall the update, leave feedback on the Play Store, and write this email to my favorite Android show hosts. That's that's an unhappy person. That's yeah. you don't mess with Android yeah, TV you for don't. Uh, or YouTube. No, you don't TV. mess with Android TV because it is such a small little platform right now. And if you're trying to grow it, you have to make the people that are actively using it and trying to support you, you have to make that software willing to be used. Yeah. You know, otherwise there's plenty of other pl like TV viewing platforms that we can jump to. I'm interested in this aspect that everybody's complaining about, about it feeling like a web wrapper. And I'm wondering if there are other experiences on Android TV that follow along those lines. And why Why would YouTube for Android TV do that? Is that just a perception that it's a web wrapper or is it actually? I don't know. It doesn't look anything like the app on Chromecast, which is weird. I mm -hmm. would think that it would look exactly like the app on Chromecast and work in that manner and keep everything nice and consistent. I wonder if it's being uh, developed to be more TV-like too. Like, I wonder if there's mm -hmm. someone, you know, working on it going, this is the way it needs to look like on a television. One would hope. It's Android TV, so I certainly would hope so. But anyways, uh, that was not the only email. We got a few others and I, we don't need to read them all, but thank you for sending them in regardless. And speaking of your emails, we've got a lot of them and we're going to rattle through a bunch of them mm -hmm. on today's episode. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, Let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. That is FreshBooks. Their all new version of their cloud accounting software is going to make running your business easy, fast, and secure. The FreshBooks dashboard gives you quick access to your spending, outstanding balances, total profit, and accounting reports like sales tax summary and profit and loss. All the tools that you're going to need to kind of keep track of the money, the numbers behind your business. You, uh, time tracking features make it easy to bill for time by client and by specific projects. Uh, you can just press play. That's going to track your time to the minute. When it comes time to create an invoice, you'll know what you did and when you did it. You can also assign services to projects and designate different rates for each service so you can bill more accurately for your time. And the person on the other end is going to love that. They love seeing that amount of detail. Send professional looking invoices online and get paid an average of 11 days faster because you're doing it super quick. You're already tracking this stuff. It's built into the system. And with FreshBooks payments, your customer can pay straight from their invoice. See what invoices uh, have been sent, viewed, and paid. You can brand, you can set recurring invoices, send uh, automatic payment reminders, or set automatic late fees to control all that stuff so you don't have to think about it. Stay connected to your clients and keep tabs on your business no matter where you are with the FreshBooks app. You snap a photo of your receipt, for example, or connect your business, your bank account, uh, credit card, to automatically import expenses daily, just brings them right in. FreshBooks integrates with Stripe, Shopify, Gusto, Acuity, Scheduling, and more. FreshBooks is adding new features and improvements to their platform on a weekly basis. They're always improving things and changing it up, giving you new features. You can now reward prompt clients and encourage customer loyalty by adding discounts to recurring templates. Uh, you can open any invoice in a new browser tab window so you can work across several invoices simultaneously and a whole lot more that just continues to improve. It's no wonder they were included in the Forbes small giants list for 2017. So try it free for 30 days. Go to freshbooks.com slash AAA and enter all about Android in the how did you hear about us section. And we thank FreshBooks for supporting this episode of all about Android. And uh, if we had an email bumper, we'd play it, but we don't. So <laughs> it would be someone typing on a keyboard going. <laughs> and then I'm, a piece of paper would come out of the typewriter and go. <laughs> okay. So email. we, I think we need to field a couple more animations for the show because we've got the hardware shack. We're, we're behind. We've got. We're behind on our animations that we never make that people make for us for free. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got some emails. Flo, you're up first. We did get some emails, and this is a particularly timing, a particularly timely, considering that the Pixel was just reduced in price, wasn't it? <gasps> I Jason heard about Apple? that. Yes, I heard about that. Two hundred dollars off, right? 
Uh, my husband told me about this first thing like the other morning when he found it because he was so excited to see it finally drop in price. What's his phone? He has a Nexus 6P. Uh, uh, okay. But anyway, so we've got an email from Peter. Uh, Peter says, I was just catching up on episode 328 and heard the email from Paul asking for, oh my gosh, Peter and Paul, sorry. <laughs> asking for a suggestion about getting a Pixel now or waiting for the Pixel 2. I just went through the same decision for myself. I have a Nexus 6P that I have had to return twice for the boot loop problem and now the battery life is getting pretty bad. Same thing happened to my husband. Sometimes it just shuts down at 30%, also uh -huh. happened to my husband. So I have been debating with myself for a while about whether I should hang on to it or if I should get a Pixel 2. Uh, then this weekend I saw that there was a sale on the Pixel at the Google store. $200 off plus a free daydream view. Okay. I also read Flo's article on Android Central about how well her Pixel is still doing. Thank you so much for reading, Peter. Those were enough for me to pull the trigger on a Pixel. Hope to get it by the weekend. Nice. That is great. You know what? I was thinking about this because I had emailed you and I said, maybe we should talk about whether it's worth waiting. Right. Which I is a topic we've talked about a couple of times yeah. in like the last couple of weeks, but does the price drop? Does the, well, does the price drop change that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. How much is it? Oh my gosh, I didn't even check before the, the show. I'm, <laughs> Two dollar, two hundred dollars off. I can't remember. what I it mean, was, but. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So let's say you want to get the Pixel. What are you gonna get? You're gonna get the virtual reality. You're not gonna get water resistance, <clears> which is a bummer. Uh, it starts at five twenty four now, which I guess is okay. Two hundred dollars cheaper than yeah. it was. Well, that's about right. So um, okay, so five hundred dollars. It's a little bit, a little bit more than a One Plus Five, for mm -hmm. instance. And you're buying directly into the wow. Google ecosystem. You're going directly into the Google mm -hmm. ecosystem, but you're starting at thirty-two gigs of storage with no expansion slot. So uh, be cognizant of that. If storage is very important for you, yes, you get the unlimited photo uploads to Google Photos, but you're going to have to constantly do device maintenance. And I'm telling you this as a Pixel XL user. However, I love my Pixel. I love, I love it so much. Right now, I'm not loving it because of the aforementioned battery problem that's happening from Android O. But unfortunately- You need to get a Mophie battery, no. Well, that, that <laughs> happened after I had filed that story with Android Central, which is what happens in this world of, of fast moving things. Yes, yes, um, absolutely. It's, I'm hoping it'll be better once the software is finalized, but regardless, I love the camera on the Pixel. Yeah, the no, camera, the camera has on the Pixel, I've seen unrivaled. some amazing pictures. For I me. actually saw it. There was a Reddit post. I wish I remembered to put it in here a couple of days ago. Someone who went to Disney World and Ooh. took pictures of the fireworks yeah. display, and they were amazing pictures. Yeah. Like I was looking at those, and you you would not if you saw those pictures. And you didn't know they were done with a smartphone. You wouldn't guess that they were like, they looked fantastic. They, so. they really do. I, you know, it was, it's just such a good phone. Oh, there they are. Hallelujah. Wow. Those are beautiful. Hallelujah. So you can actually find these at Look Imager. at that. That's Imager. ridiculous. That's insane. Like the membrane. Stunning. Yeah. It looks That's, really good. Just like the colors. See, yeah, I'm Rami sure there's some processing going on here. I'm sure they did some post-processing, but still look at that. Look at the like the definition around those lasers shooting into the sky. That just looks amazing. I need Ron to tell me what castle that is, by the way, because I can't remember if it's Sleeping Beauties or Cinderella's. I'm going there in March. My kids don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't tell them. I hope they don't watch the show. And then film it. <laughs> and then and then film the reaction, please. Yes. Uh, with and the pixel so too. I can watch it. I will. <laughs> All right, so the changes, so the, the price drop changes the equation a little bit. If yeah. someone's wondering, it's worth considering. It's not necessarily a absolutely guaranteed don't wait. It's, yeah, we're, we will allow it. Is, is that what? Yeah, this we'll stands? allow it. We'll allow it. And I think I think you'll be okay on software uh, security updates at least, because didn't Google say that they would they would support their devices for up to three years? I believe was. What they had said. Yeah, the good support. Yes, right. Yes. Three. So um, you still get security updates, maybe I, not. Yeah, security updates up to three, regular updates up to two, I believe. Like yeah. The regular OS. So if you get it now, reality. you're still getting a, a year and change in OS yeah. updates. So you're, as far as I could tell, that would probably mean that you're not only O, but you're also P. Yep. And you're directly from Google. So you'll have Google support for everything. Yeah. And that's it's, big it'll deal. be unlocked. You could take the phone wherever the heck you want in the world, it'll work. You know what? If you if you're looking that you really wanted this Pixel, go get it. Go, get, go it. get it. And in fact, Phil Clutcher, 
uh, says, hey guys, love the show. Been a long time listener. I just saw Google decreased price of Pixel XL by $200. So I rushed online and ordered. After ordering, I started reading about Bluetooth connectivity issues with the phone. As a truck driver, I rely on Bluetooth for hands-free calling and use a Bluetooth receiver dongle plugged into radio for listening to music. Have you had any issues with Bluetooth connectivity on your Pixels? Just thought I would ask so I could cancel order if need be while there is still time. Thanks. I've not encountered issues like that on my end. Have you? Nope. Uh, Phil, I have my Pixel XL because I have uh, an older car. I have Bluetooth for the phone, but I do not have Bluetooth for audio. So I bought a dongle. I plugged it into my auxiliary in the glove compartment. So I have two Bluetooth connections going whenever I'm driving. Oh, wow. And it works interchangeably. I get my phone calls and the music goes off. What you want to do is go into the settings and make sure that uh, the proper settings are ticked. So you can tick which Bluetooth profiles have phone audio, which Bluetooth profiles have media audio oh, and nice. contact sharing. Yeah. So that really helps. The problems I've encountered, but I've encountered this just with stock Android in the past couple of years is difficulty with Wi-Fi direct. For oh. instance, when I'm uh, connecting to like a wireless uh, printer, some fun like wireless printer from Fuji, I will have problems with that. And so like that's when I'll bust out a Samsung phone. Maybe less, well, I guess it depends um, from person to person, but maybe less likely to encounter that on your day-to-day -day versus yes, Bluetooth. Like precisely. you probably use Bluetooth more than you use Wi-Fi yeah. direct. And so, but I bet I haven't had still a headphone jack, which it's rumored to be gone in the next phone. That's, so that, that means something to some that's people. That's good. So when the Bluetooth Ron dies, notwithstanding. you could just get a long auxiliary cable and plug it in and then you can drive across country with all your tunes. Um, but Phil, you're not, you're not wrong. There are people who have mm -hmm. complained about this it's true, in mass. It's true. Google true. says it fixed the problem with an update back in March, uh, but there's a thread in Google's Pixel user community and it's packed full with complaints and people talking about this issue uh, as recent as yesterday on this issue, but it dates back for quite a few months. R they complain of random disconnects from Bluetooth or connected but no sound transmission, also messing with smartwatch connectivity. So there's definitely something to mm. this. I've just not experienced it and Flo has not experienced it. So it's hard to say from our own personal experience, but I would, I would, I mean, if you have the phone, you know, put it through its paces as far as Bluetooth is concerned. You, you have very specific use case for it. Use it for, I don't know how much long your, your return policy is. I think is, it's two weeks. Um, which, you know, Isn't you it? might be closing in on one week if you bought this right when you sent in the email, but, yeah. um, you know, use it in your environment for a couple of days and see how it goes. I mean, that's the best you can do. I, d I don't know other than that. And Google is obviously aware of it. I just don't know whether they've actually fixed the problem with an update uh, or whether it's an ongoing problem that they still need to address, but there you go. Moving on, we've got another, you know, we've got a lot of feedback. So, you know, we wanna, wanna move it along here. So uh, please tell Flo about this. I have been looking for <laughs> a good and comfortable headset that you put on like a hat. I despise those head thongs that muss up your hair. I feel you. Uh, the Bobo VR Z5, it is $64 on Amazon. And in the YouTube review comments, uh, it has a QR code to help you properly profile the device with a larger field of view. Mm, so this so is a VR that. device that we're talking about here. Yeah, it's um, a daydream. It looks, it's actually a it's, certified third-party yeah, daydream. Yeah, it's certified for daydream. Uh, and also this is from Amiga Tech, who says that he or she has been watching our show since the early 100th episodes. We rock. Hi, Amiga Tech. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that just looks nerdy. Uh, okay, okay. But, to be fair, VR is like nerdy as heck I, I, anyway. I know. Believe me, I, I shouldn't throw stones. I've, I've done plenty of VR and <laughs> I realize that it looks nerdy. And I just, just sometimes, every once in a while, it's like looking at it at a different angle. I think this thing with that guy smiling just looked very cheesy. But, um, but <laughs> speaking of which, <laughs> there's something about this so, one. It's right like now, we've little, got on screen showing like the, the headset. The little ear pods just make it, just take it that extra level. Uh, they do. I'm, it's a nice little VR station, though. I see what they're trying. Yeah. I like this. Is you know what? I think I might. I'm gonna try and see if I can get one of these in. Not that expensive. Try it out. I it's mean, what is bucks. what is the daydream viewer from Google? It's 79 bucks or something. So like this that. is less bucks. than that, and you get everything that you get with that. I don't know. I can't talk to the quality of it, uh, we'll but you also out. get kind of the the head, the more kind of solid plasticky head mount. Yeah. I don't know how comfortable it is uh, with the ears. Um, you know, the the headphones. 
trying to learn how to speak today. Sorry. It's all right. Um, yeah, it's it's a little nerdy look, Burke. I, I would agree, but uh, it's an alternative. And the first third party, I mean, they're obviously using the Daydream spec, which was kind of part of the point of Google unveiling the Daydream spec for third parties to actually create hardware around it. So it's it's almost like it looks like very similar to Google's Daydream viewer, just with extra stuff yep. snapped onto it. Yep, why not? That's fine. <laughs> I'm down for it. Yep. All right. Jonathan Briganti says, long time listener here. I know this has been discussed several times, but I'm surprised more people aren't in favor of Duo's ease of use. My mother was able to download, set up, and video call with me without any assistance, and that is not an easy feat. In fact, she convinced my other siblings and some relatives to download as well because it's so easy. Now, regardless of operating system, my parents and now grandparents can hit a button, be connected for a face-to-face -face conversation. It actually has replaced FaceTime as their go-to video chat option. If this were integrated with Allo to the point where there wasn't a standalone duo, I am positive most of my family members would would uh, unable to use it, be unable. Be unable to use it. Uh, but, oh, I see, as, as a standalone, making the case that it should stay standalone. Gotcha. Thank you for having a fantastic show that makes my commute fly by. I would completely agree. I've been using duo more when it comes to connecting to... Uh, like if my wife goes uh, out of town, mm -hmm. she travels every once mm -hmm. in a while. And we used to always use Hangouts. Now we've been using Duo and like I've gotten to really like the knock-knock feature. I also find that it's very resilient on lower bandwidth connections, which is one of the that features that it was touted point. as. It was touted to be better yes. and more resilient in that regard. And I find that to be true. Well, I don't, I, I don't use Duo. I don't no? use Duo. I use Hangouts because I can't do Duo from the desktop. Uh, and sometimes okay. I'm working and I'm trying to have my, I'm on a work trip. I'm trying to have a convo with my husband. I'm trying to multitask. Yeah. Sorry. Husband. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I now, should probably give you more. I also just moved my wife over to Allo. So now Yay! I'm not just talking with you guys on Allo. I'm talking with her and she seems to really like it. I love the stickers. The transition is happening. I love the stickers because that's, uh, you know. I love I love the uh, the smart reply addition like the yeah. the kind of ai smart replies thing i've gotten so used to that in inbox and gmail and it's nice to have it and in it chat sounds too. like you by yeah. the way i know it totally does because you probably don't notice sometimes i smart reply you well you know everything <laughs> that i chatted you today was smart reply <gasps> really that's how complex very smart very, very. No, not true not true Man, that ai yes. is amazing <laughs> that ai knows some really challenging amazing. topics so uh you got the last one uh this one is, and I, I'm, ah, oh, the crow, the tr okay, the trackpad, the trackpad on this Chromebook is so finicky. So sorry, it was going up and down. Uh, this is from Thomas in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I'm assuming. Uh, I have listened, is there any other Tulsa in the United States? I don't know. I have been listening to AAA for two to three years now. At the time, I was on the Samsung Galaxy bandwagon. I bought a Galaxy S7 Edge for personal use and an iPhone 6X Plus. 6S Plus for work last year. Much to my surprise, I very quickly discovered I loved my iPhone and hated my Galaxy and no longer own it. The point to all this is that though I no longer use an Android device, I am still a listener. AAA is still one of my favorite podcasts. Aw, shucks. Every now and then you even mention an app that is cross-platform. <laughs> I keep thinking one day you'll announce an Android app that will bring me back. Until, or an Android or device. Android device. Yeah. Until then... Look for sent from my iPhone at the end of my emails. Thanks for the show. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah, I love I love hearing this from people who do end up who are using iOS or who transition away from Android to iOS. Not because I enjoy hearing that news, because you know I'm kind of a fan of Android myself. But it's nice no to kidding. know that that what we're doing is entertaining to people who you know yes. not only to people who are using the platform, uh, but beyond. And we hear from a lot of people like that, so it's awesome to hear that. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good news. I hope you enjoy your iPhone experiment, and we'll see you back real soon, okay? All right. Uh, this episode, I'm going to thank a sponsor here before we get into the arena, and Brian's even going to pitch in on mm -hmm. the arena today. He's bringing some heat. Would that would that qualify you as the guest, or what does that mean? No, you're not really a guest. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should just start my own tally. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be part really, of Really, Brian? Uh, you're really going to do this to me? Do you know how much I'm suffering in the arena and you want to have your own tally? <laughs> well, I mean, I could still vote for your app tonight, right? <laughs> or your your app could qualify as Ron's app. 
No, stop oh. this. Stop. No, he's not here. It doesn't count. Yeah, I don't know how Ron would feel about that. I get that. the same uh, I get the same treatment when I'm not here. So. <laughs> All right, that was a horrible idea. Never mind. Ron, let's strike that from the record. Uh, let's first take a minute to thank the sponsor of this episode, and that's Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club is the smarter choice if you're looking for a, a kit, a way to kind of, subs you can subscribe to a service so that you don't have to think about what it takes, you know, when you're at the grocery store to stock up and give yourself everything that you need to have a nice close shave. You don't need to do, you don't even need to think about it anymore. That's what Dollar Shave Club is all about. I've got the Dollar Shave Club box right here. You get a great shave at a great price, uh, conveniently delivered to your door in a box just like this. It's an awesome life hack and no-brainer choice because everything that you need is delivered right to you. You no longer have to schlep to the store to buy a cheap disposable razor that gives you a cheap shave or spend a fortune on razors with gimmicky shaving technology that you don't need. And uh, you, you get everything you need, especially in this box. You got a couple of razor blades here. I'm trying to hold the box, but that's not working for me, so I'm going to go like that. Uh, you get a nice assortment of razor blades. You just snap it right in, pull it out and you're good to go. And then when you need another one, you've got backups. You can uh, sign up for for deals that send you replacement blades on the regular. If you are a, a regular shaver, uh, that will be handy. Also, this is the Dr. Carver's Shave Butter, which is actually a really nice, smooth shaving butter. You keep this in the shower, and your face is going to feel real good when you're shaving. Uh, just it, uh, it all feels really good. It's got a nice kind of... Uh, I don't know, kind of like a stingy, minty quality to it that makes your face feel fresh. Uh, and it's it's awesome stuff. Uh, they've got the DSC, the Dollar Shave Club Executive Razor with the Dr. Carver Shave Butter. And that makes the blade kind of gently glide over, give you that smooth shave. Uh, Dr. Carver's Shave Butter is transparent for a more precise shave. It helps prevent ingrown hairs, plus fight razor bumps. And... With this information, you too can make the smarter choice by do joining Dollar Shave Club. For a limited time, new members can get their first month of the Executive Razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver's Shave Butter for only $5 and free shipping. After that, razors are just a few bucks a month, and uh, that's a $15 value for only 5 bucks. And then your first month month box, an awesome weighty handle, like I showed you, a full cassette of four cartridges and a tube of their shave butter. After your first month, replacement cartridges ship automatically at their regular price. There are no hidden fees, no commitments. You can cancel at any time that you like. You can only get this offer exclusively at dollarshaveclub.com slash Android. Make sure and put Android there at the end. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash android and we thank dollar shave club for their support all right it's time for the arena so many enter <laughs> but only one lives android uh, arena i gotta pull up last week's poll i forgot to do that let's see we'll view the results uh oh you've already got it up Oops. pulse yeah. pulse sms 34% of the votes. That's the first place winner. Wait, who, who brought that in? I forgot. It was Pulse. Geez, that was dead last. All right, you guys. I'll never bring mm. in another sequencer. I, I, oh, I, oh, well, that was David's, um, oh, which is an app that he job. swears yes. by. I know. And that was like, oh, I guess I could put, bring in Pulse SMS. Meanwhile, it's the winner. 34%. Caffeine was Ron's app. Mm -hmm. Second place, 29%. Little Alchemy. I like to call it Little Alchemy. 20%, third place. And then Sammy. Sorry, Sammy. I'll make my music on my own. Yeah. Uh, Wade County in the chat has the results for how we've been doing, and they have disappeared from my screen. That's okay. Ron XO, 83 oh, guests, go. 83 tied. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Raygun01, that would be me, uh, 77. And Flo, that would be you. That's 74. So, man. I got to up my game, y'all. I really uh, do. We both do. We uh, both do. We, ha we can't let Ron win. Again. Well, it might be guess. Wait, did he win again? I mean, did he win last year or was a guess? Ron, Ron is not here this week. It's true. 
And if Brian is in fact, are you a guest? We yeah, no, no, he's a guest. So by the important. way, the, the, hold on, hold on. The chat room has ruled that Brian has to be tried as a guest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so okay. Okay. I think that's, that's what we rules. did in the past. Too. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Guests have won three weeks in a row. That's an important metric here. No pressure, Brian. No, there's never any pressure. Good thing I thrive under pressure. Yeah, sorry. I can, I can tell. I can tell. Um, yeah, this could be a very, this could be a turning point. Ron wasn't able to make the show tonight, tied with the guests up at the top, and the guest is going to get a, a placement. Probably going to do real well. I've seen the app; it's pretty good. Um, Ron could lose his top spot this week. It could happen, folks. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, we'll we'll see about that. But first, uh, I guess it means you're the returning sure. non-winner. Thank you for calling me a non-winner, not a loser. <laughs> so you go first. Ay ay ay. All right. <laughs> Let me unlock this. Okay. All right. So today into the arena, I bring you. So guys, I was working on uh, a giant feature about USB-C for an assignment I was doing, and I stumbled upon this. USB Type-C simulator in uh, the Google Play Store. Boop. Oh, you know what? I should bring it up first. Sorry. <laughs> so basically what this is, is uh, well, here we go. Okay, hold on. <gasps> okay. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So. There was a lot of flashing going yes, on there. Yes, there is. This is a USB-C cable. Uh-huh. I'm going to plug it in. It's, this is why I never win the arena. This is why I don't win the arena. Um, all you have to do is uh, connect it and unconnect it. Uh huh. And every time you connect it and unconnect it, you make a dollar. And what? I, this make I know it makes no sense. You can switch around the USB cable if you want and plug it in. Every time you plug it in, by the way, it plays the same song, which is this terrible, terrible cover of. It's, it's it's a terrible cover of Four Non Plus. Oh my God. Okay, so I had wow. so what I did is today I was it's kind of like it's kind of like I, today I've been grinding this entire day just like pressing this button to try and make the money that I need to buy a new smartphone. So let's do we're gonna do this together on screen. Okay, how much do you need in order to buy a new? Um, so this is a game. dollars. I think at first I didn't realize it was a game because I saw a USB Type C simulator and I thought it was a utility. But it no, is it's, not a utility. A this is a game. Okay, all right. So here are uh, the quests that you can do. You have to buy two phones. You have to rotate the cable several times to get $3. And you have to plug in the cable to the phone a certain number of times to get $20. Um, this whole app is just a fun little app to get you to download the developer's actual game. But it just typed up because I was... I was looking at USB-C. Anyway, okay, so I wanted to buy a phone with everyone on on camera, okay? Because I was reading through the comments. By the way, this game has a really good ratings. Uh, right now, oh no, it doesn't actually. Oh, Just kidding. Well. It has three and a half. It has 2.3 actually. It's um, got a lot of fives. It's also got a lot of But it's also ones. got a lot of fives and somebody thinks that's a bot. But like I went through the fives and it's just people like me who have found complete joy in the in the complete unnecessariness of this entire thing. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a seizure <laughs> in a box. It's a seizure Ooh, in a box. Kind of um, so Brian, if you will, back to the camera, I would like to buy a phone with everyone. Please buy a so phone. So you guys tell me which one you want. We can buy this one, this one, this one. Are they any different? Or the special, special phone, which is nine 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 nine. But I'm not doing that. Nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. That would yes. take you forever. Also, you get a special bonus if you listen to music for uh, ten hours straight. Just by the way. Okay. Uh, just in case you guys are curious. So that song. That song. So you leave that song playing. Yeah. And so you do a work which one day. would you guys like to buy? Uh, are, is there any difference? I, there is a difference. Yes. You have to collect them all. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that one. Um. Okay. Let's buy this one. Oh, okay. What is it? I think this is the next. Oh, wait. Uh, 5X. It's oh, a 5X. Okay. All right. Achievement. Oh, I got unlocked. an achievement. Well, at least I, you got an achievement. Yeah. I got an achievement Jeez. in my Google Play games. All right. All right. Same song. Oh, good. Same song. Man, this this game is, is full of hidden secrets. <laughs> full of hidden secrets. <laughs> That's all the game is. You just all right. plug it in well, and unplug it. Flo, I learned something today. I learned that this game exists. 
<laughs> this is why I never win the arena. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short. I think that has potential. You never know. It's so ridiculous. I had to bring it in. I just didn't know. I had to share it with the world. So I'm sharing it with all of you. I appreciate that. USB Type-C simulator. If you want to simulate what it's like to listen to have USB type C in your phone. Terrible cover of Four Non Blondes. And what normally yeah, that's that's actually what normally happens. Which when you by the way uh, is very related because that song was written in the lower hate. Okay, related to something, sure. Which is in San Francisco, California. Which is close to us. Yes. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Brian, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I can compete with that because I mean, if I lose, I'm not going to lose with the kind of flair that Flo has. Yeah, that's the thing. You gotta you gotta compete against the flair. Uh, oh, and by the way, somebody pointed out in the chat room, mathematically, Ron will lose today. He he will lose. The yeah, first that's spot. true. That's true. It's going to happen. Well, that's his own fault for so, eating all that ice cream and not being here, right? Yep. Yep. He gets the ice cream. <laughs> One of us gets the lead. That's right. Well, so you'll, you'll have to forgive me. I'm a little rusty. Haven't done the arena in a long time, but um, I don't know. Don't sell yourself short, Brian. <laughs> if you know me at all, um, Futurama was one of my favorite TV shows of all time. I've watched it to the point where I don't need to see it. I can just listen to the quotations and I know <laughs> it. Um, but... As I'm sure you guys are aware, it got pulled off Netflix because you guys are big uh, Futurama fans, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe Flo. Yeah. 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 Um, I've, I've had my time I'm a fan with of Matt Futurama. Groening. 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 Gro can never say his and last Billy name. West. And yeah, all the, it, so they came out with a game, of course, uh, on Android pretty relatively recently. I've been holding off playing, uh, playing it because I'm not the kind of person that likes to play, um, I think it was like Simpsons Tapped Out and stuff. Yeah, oh, okay. that game is like, yeah. It has a following. I saw a lot of addiction to those sort of games, and I kind of wanted to stray away from that. But this one I couldn't put off any longer. Um, but what they've done is they've incorporated a lot of the stuff, all the you know nuances of Futurama into a game, and they actually got the uh, same voice actors and stuff. And I, I've cut down a little video for it, <gasps> but the actual intro to it features the voices of everybody who is on the cast, and they have kind of like a little story that goes into this game. <laughs> And it just, it ties into everything pretty well. And there's all these little uh, nuances and secrets and things that you go along and you're like, oh, I remember that episode where they talked about, you know, Nibbler doing this one thing. Or, you know, the little robot that the Bender hated is the one that you use to fix everything. And so, like... It's very similar to some of those games where you go along and you unlock things and you start out with just Fry, uh, the main character, and you move along and you try and rescue other characters from the show as you go along. And as you do this, you kind of um, unlock this fog of war sort of area that is tied into Hypnotoad. I don't know if you're familiar. Yes. All hail the Hypnotoad. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so <laughs> as you clear away the fog, you can kind of build um, build out the city the way you want to. So there's all these unlocks uh, in the kind of the left hand screen there. There's like a little um, there's a little artifact thing, but also that's another building that I placed there. So you can kind of design the city as you want. But the way that you progress through the story is that you get these artifacts that allow you to kind of unlock characters and stuff. So. Now, I didn't play a lot of like Simpsons Tapped Out or some of those games, but I think you're kind of like locked into that kind of view. But this game is kind of layered where you play the city kind of building stuff and you, you unlock uh, certain things through your actions. But then it turns into another kind of game where you can um, go into space because, you know, that was a big part of uh, Futurama was going into space, delivering packages and stuff. I'm going to skip forward through my B-roll. But you can travel to like some of the planets that they had in the show. So probably familiar with Omicron, Percy I-8, where Lur lives, uh, you know, destroyer of worlds. <laughs> and so <laughs> you take your delivery crew, and in this case, I only had Amy unlocked, and you kind of go through the universe picking up, you know, all the while picking up credits and stuff like that. And there are in-game, you know, the catch is if you want to progress more quickly, you pay for in-app stuff. But, you know, if you have the patience for it, you can pick up these things just, you know, playing the game. And so one of the other layered game types that they have in it is like this 8-bit style kind of old school, like it's very similar to Final <laughs> Fantasy-esque uh, yes, fighting totally. style. I love wow. it. Wow. But it's not completely just... Uh, 
Yeah, you know, it does. It, you have to kind of interact with it too while it's doing it. So you tap the characters, but there's like a timing mechanism oh and specials and stuff. So there's this city building aspect, but there's also this like eight bit like retro uh, fighting game style to it. So I mean, I've only kind of dipped my toes in it for the last day and a half because I actually didn't really know I was going to be doing <laughs> doing an app until this afternoon. But uh, I think if you're a Futurama Futurama fan at all, or and you enjoy um, hearing the voices again and seeing the art style is all like directly from the show, so it's it's pretty entertaining. Um, you know, I didn't think I, I'm kind of afraid to have started playing this game because I think I might. You You've know. opened the door. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, if you're yeah, if you're a fan of Futurama, definitely give it a shot because it's uh, it's got all the things that I loved about the show. That's and awesome. I, I think it's free. Uh, In-app purchases. Freemium. Yeah, exactly. So not my favorite style of uh, of but, game, but but I mean the, the question there then ends up being does it is it freemium to the point to where it feels like a like a pressure mm -hmm. sort of thing where where if you're going to play it and have any sort of fun you need to like keep up to speed with buying things <laughs> See, you feel like you need to i was reading through some of the reviews i think you may if you progress far enough it gets to the point where it almost seems like you have to but i you know i'm not that far into it um but i think the consensus is that you can get by without having to buy stuff but you know if you if you really like the game you're probably going to start buying stuff in it slippery yep. slope yep absolutely that's awesome futurama uh futurama worlds of tomorrow i love the well i mean the art style of futurama yeah. is awesome and the, you know obviously they're going to make the game in mm -hmm. that style and looks awesome i think ron should be afraid <laughs> ron should be very afraid got an announcement you guys what did you bring Got an announcement. You got an announcement? Wait, a real announcement? Oh, snap. I know where he's going. My say. app is called Baby Name. <laughs> My really? announcement is that I'm going to show it to you right now. Oh, uh, you sneak. What a tease. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> I was like, another baby? I know. I nope. was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> nope. We're done. But if you are, <laughs> if you're thinking about having a baby or another baby, uh, you might be asking yourself, self, what should I name this baby once this baby becomes a, a baby? And, uh, you know, <laughs> if you've ever gone through the process, you know <laughs> that it's not that easy. It's not. <laughs> then your name sticks with you your entire life. And what if the kid changes it? Then you're like, I failed as a person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you want to be armed with the right information of what to call your baby. And you want to be in agreement with your uh, significant other. Um, Never name it after an ex. Never that's a good, that's name a good it after an ex. Line of, of advice. Maybe they can build that liked. into here, like a a blacklist of names. Like, what People names do you know should never appear? <laughs> uh, so basically, this this app is called Baby Name. One word, and it does what what anyone would expect out of a a, a baby name app. It it meshes the world of Tinder with <laughs> picking oh. a baby name. <laughs> So you it's and your Tinder partner, for babies. it's Tinder for babies, uh, to create a baby name. So you and your partner both download this app and you set it up so that you can, uh, you can select a partner and they, you know, you both, you both set it up on your own terms and then you select, you know, the, the gender of your baby. Are you, are you having a boy or a girl? And then I would go through here and I would go, okay, do I like the name Gavin? It means white hawk. I want more information. Uh, origin, English most used in the United States. And then, of course, we have the meaning. Yeah, go away, Gavin. Uh, Marcus means warlike. Nah, that Whoa. doesn't seem appropriate. Junior means young. Nah. Uh, Declan. Eh, you know, Ancient Irish okay. saint name. Let's find out more information. Uh, well, it's Irish. Irish. <laughs> that makes sense. I, wonder if I will go ahead and take it. Name. Sure. I'm going to pass on that for now. <laughs> uh, okay, there was a feature. I probably could have read that out and, and uh. given you more features about this but Cade sure that's different Cade is sure. a name uh yeah apparently uh Daniel and Raymond and Chase I'm getting a lot less uh Tiago anyways Lorenzo which I means from Laurentium <laughs> from Laurentium name origin Italian Lorenzo all right so I swipe left on the names I don't like I swipe right on the names I do like my my partner would also do the same and had I thought 
through on this demo, I would have, we, you know, you would be my partner for the show and we sure. would do this. Uh, the thing is, there's 30,000 names in we're, here. We're naming an Android phone. So there's no matches here because I have no partners set up. But even if I did, 30,000 names in, inside here. So I imagine it would take a while to like get to a name that we would both agree to. But anyways, they would appear here and then you can make your choice from there. It's a way to make selecting a baby name just a little bit easier. All those matches appear here for the picking and you go from there. But does it have names like Apple? Which is what uh, Gwyneth Paltrow named her child. Well, let's see here. I'm assuming Apple is, is a, girl. a girl. So congrats. Let's find a name for your daughter. Okay. Um, Malia. Let's see. Is there That's pretty. Ollie, Angelina, Annabella. Oh, I should have swiped right on that. That's Megan would have ap appreciated that. Are these going in alphabetical order? No, Sophie. Sure. Why not? Uh, I, I'm sure Apple's in here. Apple's got to be in here. It's got to. I don't, I don't see any, any reason why it wouldn't be. 30,000 names. Come on. Uh, so it's called Baby Name. One word. It's free. And there are you, you can go in the settings and, and remove ads. Uh, also, for 99 cents, you can undo swipe. So if you accidentally swipe one way, you can undo it. Jeez. You shake. You go, <laughs> uh, and it comes back. Don't shake the baby. Shake Baby Jeez. Name. Okay? All right. There you go. <laughs> Baby name. I have no announcement other than that you should vote for that. Twit.to slash triple A poll 329 to place your vote for your favorite app this week. Twit.to slash AAA poll 329. Is it USB Type-C Simulator? Futurama Worlds of Tomorrow? Baby name. Brian, you are allowed to vote for your own yeah, app. Yeah, you are. You are. It's no. Oh, oh it's Brian. Oh, oh that's a vote sweet. has been counted for USB so Type C simulator. That's so sweet of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the song reference I like in that app for sure. So uh, I'm going with that. I'm going to keep tapping on that thing until I get all those phones because I just, now I just want to unlock all those darn phones. All right. There's no reason for it to exist, but it's also a good way to test the Honor 9. You remember that egg incorporated game that I brought in yes. that, was, that was making eggs? That game I felt like was just a vehicle to get you to tap as many times as possible. Because the more you tap, the more chickens you release from the coop to go lay I think this is more of like this a is fidget like spinner. that, <laughs> but to the nth degree. Yeah, that's like fidget spinner. Yeah, that's you're like right. A, oh. Really, I got to just sit here all day. It's, yeah, it's like a stress ball that creates stress. <laughs> yes. Oh, so oh. that's actually a meme that exists. It is. Yeah, that's an internet thing. Yeah, so that's why I voted for it. Oh, my gosh. I had no idea. <laughs> yep, it involves He-Man. And Battle Cat. <laughs> Any other characters in there? It's just He-Man and Battle Cat. Uh, I think. Skeletor or whatever his Skeletor. name was. Skeletor. Yeah, he's the one that screams <laughs> out, and I pray. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, Beast Man. Yeah. I was a, I was a he man. I can tell. I was gonna say. Oh, uh, man at arms. Me. There was, there was man at arms. <laughs> I had some of these characters. Uh, oh boy. Okay. Uh, Anyways, we're, we're exploring my youth right there. Yeah, really? For our audio listeners, go what? to YouTube and type in, hey, yeah. One thing I can tell you about cartoons of my era, they were really not very animated very well. The animation was really poor in that era of cartoons. I don't know. They're nostalgic now, though, right? They are. They're very nostalgic. <laughs> Denver, the last dinosaur, another cartoon. Oh, boy. Uh, all right, that's it. I think we've reached the end. We did awesome. High five. I normally high five on TNT, but that was fun. Thanks for- It was. It was for, fun. Thanks for having fun with, with Brian and I. And of course, without every Tuesday. Ron, more, more importantly, without Ron. More importantly, without Ron. Yeah. I am going to get ice cream after this, though, because I feel left out. Yeah, me too. Um- what do you want people to know? Oh, that's right. I need to plug myself. Yep. Well, follow me at follow me on Twitter at oh that flow and on Snapchat at oh that flow. I am working on a lot of stuff right now. There's a lot of stuff coming through. You may have seen some of my links posting throughout the week. So just keep tuning in on social media. Uh, I still need to update FlorenceIon.com, and of course my column at Android Central, where you can read me. There you go. Thank you, Flow. What about you, Brian? Uh, for me, well, when I'm not doing this show, uh, TD, I, uh, I do know how with Padre who's coming back next week. So we're going to have some new episodes coming in. 
but otherwise, you can follow me at cranky underscore hippo uh, for everything else. Right on. Uh, you can find me at jasonhowell.net, yellowgoldmusic.com. They all point to the same place. Uh, but that's that's really about it, folks. Thank you for watching. We had a lot of fun today, and we will be back next week with even more fun, and probably all three of us. Uh, leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us an email or video mail, triple A at twit.tv. You can find us on Twitter. We are at Android Show, if you don't find our individual tweet, uh, Twitter IDs there as well. Uh, Reddit, we are twitaaa.reddit.com. You can find show notes and past episodes at our show page on the web, twit.tv slash AAA. You can also find our episodes on iTunes, uh, Pocket Cast, YouTube, everywhere that you find podcasts. And catch us live every Tuesday around 5.30 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. That's it for this week. We'll see you all next week on another episode of All About Android. Oh, are we going from this and then into the hardware? So we're not doing like a news. There segment? is no news. Yeah, okay. that's, that's okay. what I was telling you what? earlier. There, oh, I'm there sorry. Really isn't. Sorry, Brian. That. What? Oh, Brian doesn't get to see the news today. No, but you get to be on the show. There's no news today, everyone. <laughs> so forget about it. <laughs> see, we got that. Uh, wh whoever's editing, just make sure that ends up in there at the very end or yes. something. <laughs> <laughs>